confess you in Jesus. So my sermon is called Get Off the Throne. Get off the throne. And we start in Psalm 23 and verse 5. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thank you, Dan. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. So God is saying, I want to be intimate with you. I want to have a one-on-one -on -one meal with you. I want to sit down at like a dining room table and talk to you. And this is what God is saying. And a feast meal I am preparing for one reason only, so that I can have intimacy with you. Like somebody, if a lady invites a man for a meal, when we were going out, my wife put the time aside, and she, well, she wasn't my wife yet, she prepared a meal, and there were candles and all kinds of, because she wanted to get to know me intimately, <laughs> okay? <laughs> <laughs> but God does the same for us. I prepare a meal for you for intimacy in the presence of my enemies. And then what happens there? You anoint my head with oil and my cup overflows. Your anointing that you carry comes from your intimacy with God. Amen. Don't try and minister or go on a mission trip, or do anything in the kingdom of God until you've sat at his table. It's all about sitting at his table. It's all about truly being intimate with him. And frontline, I want to say that our intimacy has been lacking. Frontline, I want to hear God is saying, I want to be more intimate with frontline. I want to pull you into another level of this. And every person that does anything, be it in business, in marriage, in ministry, in anything that you do, you have a level of anointing. In other words, based on your time that you spent at the table with God, you have a certain anointing. People go and start a church. And whatever their level of anointing is, doesn't matter where they start it, it will be filled up to that level of anointing very quickly. Be it a home cell or a business or anything, you go to your level of anointing without effort. So everybody has a different level of anointing. Let's talk about... Um, uh, what is his name? Your favorite guy that traveled through Africa, Reinhard Bonker. Okay? He had a level of anointing for millions. And wherever he set up and worked, millions came. Then people like Angus has also operated in that level of anointing of a million. Doesn't matter to which city he goes to in South Africa, he draws a massive crowd and he has a specific anointing for the unchurched. And I'm very, very blessed that there is people that has an anointing to draw the unchurched into one place and minister to them. Amen. There's the young Daniel, okay? 25 years old, but his level of anointing is in the hundreds of thousands. Whenever he goes, wherever he goes, there's 100,000 people there without even any effort. I'm not saying he doesn't prepare. But I can go to the same stuff and do the same preparation, and there won't be 100,000 people there because I don't carry the same anointing. It's not that he's a better preacher. It's not that he has more knowledge. It is the level of anointing that comes from his level of intimacy. So God is saying to Frontline, I'm calling you to another level of anointing by calling you to another level of intimacy, by calling you to more time at my table, by calling you to more time one-on-one -on -one with me. Psalm 127. I discussed this with a friend of mine yesterday, and uh, it just so rang true as I was preparing. Unless the Lord builds the house, 
they labor in vain who build it. And unless the Lord guards the city, the watchman stays awake in vain. If it's vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he gives his beloved sleep. We can't, I said just now again, we can't change anything by worrying. We can't change anything by effort. And I'm not saying we mustn't do the basics, but we've got to understand that it is what God anoints that is truly going to make the difference. When God takes the little bit you do, your two loaves and five fishes, and he feeds 5,000 with it, it comes from the anointing that what he does with your life. David was the most intimate shepherd, and that's why he became such a successful king. His successes as a king stem from him writing that part, Psalm 23, you prepare a table for me. He understood the intimacy with God, and that's why he had the anointing to lead as a king. And the moment you lose your intimacy with God, you lose your anointing. Because, listen to it again, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. So many people are praying for the overflow. And God says, just get intimate with me. Just come and sit at my table. The overflow is a result of the intimacy. The anointing is a result of the intimacy. And God is saying, I'm calling you to another level of intimacy. In church, there's three levels of intimacy that we can experience in church. We can minister on three levels of intimacy. And it's the same in your church, in your cell, or in your business, or even your marriage. Everything in your life depends on your level of in intimacy and so on. And your level of anointing comes from your level of intimacy. It has nothing to do with effort, but with anointing. And I'm not saying don't do the practical things. The last few Saturdays, uh, we've been here, a lot of people sticking down carpets and doing effort to create a place where the anointing can flow. But it's not about the carpets. It is about so that you can kneel down and not get your clothes dirty. Okay? It's about you being able to get closer to God and we're seeing this place getting finished for this whole time. Church planters will plant a church or a cell and quickly will be at their level of anointing without hard work or effort. So once you have run a cell of 10 people, you can start a cell of 10 people just like that because that's where your level of anointing is. Your challenge is to now take it to the next level. Your challenge is to saying, okay, Lord, I've operated at the level of 10, but now I want to operate at the level of 20. I've operated at the level of 100, but now I want to operate at the level of 200. And it's not going to happen without intimacy. It's not going to happen through studying church growth. It's not going to happen through more services. It's not going to happen through a better worship team. It's not going to happen because of a better premises. It's going to happen because of intimacy. We've been on this scripture now for the last couple of weeks. Abide in me and I in you, John 15. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself... Unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. Amen. We can't do anything in the kingdom of God if we haven't first abided in him. Come on now. Yes, Verse 5, abide in the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. We've been focusing a lot on that, him and us and us in him. From Pastor Louise's time, and it's just come through more again. For without me, you can do? Nothing. Oh. But I thought it's effort. I thought it's your hard work. I thought it's your high IQ. I thought it's your ability in these things. I thought it's the studies that you did. If anyone does not abide in me, he's cast out as a branch and withered. And they gather them and throw them into the fire and they are burnt. 
If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit, so you will be my disciples. Something changes in that intimate time. When you are intimate with God, you don't come out the same. You don't come out the same. Mm-hmm. So we're still on the three levels of ministry. Let me try and explain it first outside of God and just in a natural way, and then we'll take it to God. Um, so we were at youth on Friday night. Who of the youth enjoyed that? We were on a one-on-one basis or on a small group basis with the young people. On Wednesday night, we were at a home cell in Ramsar, and we could get to that level of intimacy. So let's say you're coming into the church today in for the first time, and I don't know if we've asked yet, is there any first-time visitors yet today? Hey, Rose. <laughs> Welcome. Let us. She got touched yesterday in the outreach, and she was at prayer last night, and yes, she is in church today. Praise God. But um, if she comes here and there's somebody that she's never met, well, who can I pick on? Okay, let's take mom. But she hasn't seen mom, but she sees mom here in the church. So that is like the omnipresence of God. You know they're there, you know they exist, but you have no idea what is on their heart. You have no idea who she is. Does that make sense? So Rose can see mom, but she's never spoken to mom. Ah, oh, sorry, Angel, where did I get that wrong? Angel has seen um, mom sitting here, but she's never spoken to mom, so she doesn't know who mom is. If mom gets on the platform and she starts preaching, Angel will get to know Mom's anointing. Does that make sense? She'll see miracles happen, and she'll see mom give prophetic words, and she'll know mom's anointing. And that's where a lot of the church is with God. They know God's anointing. And I can use another example for that. Let me pick on somebody that's not here. Uncle Len. He's been sitting in a church all the time, And he came and did the offering the other Wednesday night. And so many people came to me afterwards and said, wow, I never knew Uncle Len carried such an anointing. Hey, who who felt like that? Yeah, you hadn't seen him in church all the years. But when he got up here and he spoke and he opened his mouth, you got another level with him. Just like the youth sees us every week when we minister from here. But when we came to their youth and we sat here in a very small group and we said, ask us questions, it got to a whole nother level of intimacy. And how, what did they do? They went, wow, that's awesome. That's unbelievable. Is that right, Emily? Because they got us onto that more intimate level, they experienced more of us. Now, exactly the same with God. Most people know about God, they know Jesus exists, and they believe that he exists. But they need to come to the level of anointing where he starts operating in miracles and starts understanding how much he loves them and knows his heart through the anointing. When a preacher preaches under the anointing, he has to do everything and people see God working in his life. To be honest, my anointing is around about 100 people. That's where my anointing level operates. And I can come here and preach, and that is what's going to happen. We're going to operate at the level of 100. I can go start a church in Benoni, and we will be at the level of 100 in no time. 70, 80 people in the service, but 100 people belonging to the church. It will be relatively no effort because that's just what God does and we're to operate the place that we are at and we're operating at. 
So when someone is working at their anointing, they have to lay hands on everyone. They have to call everyone forward. Everybody wants to be prayed for by that person. And there's a lot of worship nearly of the messenger. And people drive hundreds of miles to get to somebody with the anointing that they recognize. Because it's about the person that's preaching. And it's not wrong. It is just a level of operation. But I believe God wants to take us past that and take us into another level. But before I go on to the presence, the intimate presence, let's just read Matthew 17. Yeah, it's where the disciples prayed for people and they didn't get healed. And Jesus answered them, because of the littleness of your faith, that is your lack of firmly relying and trust. For truly I say to you, if you had faith like a grain of mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to yonder place, and it will move, and nothing will be impossible to you. But this kind does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So your anointing will increase by your level of prayer and fasting. Do you and the year what I'm saying? Yes. Pastor Christian, NBCFC is challenging me because he just finished a 40 day liquid only fast. And I'm going, Yo! I'm expecting some miracles from your life. I'm expecting something to change. I'm expecting some new revelation because of your intimacy that you've pushed in for. It didn't fast for any other reason but to get closer to God. Amen. So your anointing in both business and ministry, is going to increase based on your level of intimacy. Based on your level. If you expect miracles to happen in your anointing, you have to draw from God in that level. But the third level is the glory of the intimate presence of God. When churches start to operate in that place, the human can get out of the way. It is not about the person preaching. It is about what God is doing right there in the seats. That's what I'm believing God for. That it's not going to be about me laying hands on here yeah, or anything that I have done, but it's going to be because of the anointing and the glory of God reaching out across the place. Healings are going to happen mid-sermon. Healings are going to happen during worship. People are going to suddenly see money appear in their accounts. Jobs are going to come during the service. People are going to walk in here with heartbroken, messed up marriages. And by the time they get down that ramp, they will be falling together on their face as husband and wife and changing. Not because of anything that was said, but because of the atmosphere of the glory of God. Because of the wholeness and the completeness of Jesus. Philippians 4 and verse 18 speaks about this glory. Indeed, I have all and abound. I am full, having received from Ephroditus the things sent from you, a sweet-smelling aroma and acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. And my God shall supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. When we get into that glory, there is wealth and healing immediately available. His riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Now to our Father and our God and Father be glory forever and ever. So we have to pursue the glory. It is in that process, in that place of where we've truly laid everything down, that things are going to change. It's not going to change by a nice sermon, and it's not going to change by doing things in a certain format. It's going to change when God touches us. Let's read from Revelations 5 and verse 8. And I really want you to understand the atmosphere from where God spoke this. Now, when he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song saying, You are worthy to take the scroll. And to open its seals. I want you to think of that moment in heaven. When God said. You are worthy to open the seals. And you were slain. 
and have redeemed us to God by your blood. Out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation. And have made us kings and priests to our God. And we shall reign on the earth. So there was heaven and they just couldn't stop worshipping him. Somebody spoke the other day about that the only time we can worship God in pain is right here on earth. The only time we can worship God in defeat is here on earth. Because in heaven there's no defeat. There's no pain. There's no illness. Once we get into heaven, into the true glory of God, we will not have the opportunity again to worship him in pain. To worship him in brokenness. To worship him in failure. Because from that moment on, everything is perfect. Everything is whole. Everything is complete. But here on earth, we have an ability to worship him with our failures. With our mess-ups. With our sin. We have an opportunity to, mess to worship him with all we have. And out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation have made us kings and priests to our God, and we shall reign on earth. Then I looked and heard the voice of many angels around the throne, and living creatures and the elders, and the number of them was 10,000 times 10,000, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. So what did Jesus do on the cross for us? Listen to this part of verse, um, uh, verse 12. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain, to receive power, and riches, and wisdom, and strength, and honor, and glory, and blessing. That's what Jesus went to get for you. So that when you step into the glory, all of those things become available to you. When you step into the glory in your business, all these things that you're trying to achieve through effort becomes available like that. And every creature which is in heaven and on earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all that are in them are heard saying, Blessing and honor and glory and power be to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. So God is saying to us that there is a glory place in heaven that he wants to call us to in this time. He's calling you into heaven as such. He's calling you into his presence where you sit at the table with him and nothing is impossible for you at that moment. Nothing is out of your reach when you truly lock eyes with him. When you come into the fullness of what he has, all your worries, all your concerns, all your fears and failures fall away. Then the four living creatures said, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and worshipped him who lives forever and ever. The elders, those that are chosen out of the greatest servants of God through all the ages. The 24 of them fell down and worshipped him when they got into his presence. When we truly get into his presence, we cannot stand. You cannot stay the same as you are. In Revelations 4 verse 9, and I'm closing with this. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne. That is the key. Where you cast your anointing and your ability and your strength before him. You take your crown. Because your crown is who you are and what you have achieved and what you are proud of and who you think you are. And you've put it down before Jesus. That is when you step into that place. I loved what Queen Elizabeth said. She said, I hope that Jesus would come while I'm still alive. 
because I would be able to put my crown down before him. I would be able to give everything that makes me Queen Elizabeth to him. And so we need to step into the glory of God by laying everything who is of him, of ourselves, down to him. Everything that makes us unique, everything that makes us special, everything that we find value in ourselves in, we lay down. Today, in this front line, I'm laying down my anointing. From here onwards, it's not about me. It's not about my ability. It's not about my anointing. It's not about mom's or any of the leadership's anointing. It is only about the glory of God. And if there's any practical way that I can get out of the way to let God, I will do it. If it means taking off a jacket or taking off a tie or whatever you want to do that you think, well, he takes glory in that. You are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and were created. When the glory comes, you realize that you're only a vessel, only a messenger. You lay down your crown. Worship team, get ready to come up here. I want us to sing and worship and say, God, I lay down all of who I am. I lay down everything that makes me me. Because God is going to operate in this place. Oh, shit. You're all I need, Jesus.